Hello guys, welcome to our presentation. We will be presenting the work done by us to solve a very common real life problem using the three modes of heat transfer. We hope you enjoy the video and get to learn something interesting. In our day to day life, boiling water is the most common activity we can, we can find many reasons to boil water, for example, drinking, cooking, bathing, etc. For these purposes, in India, we generally use a gas stove to boil water, but many users complain about the long time it takes to boil water for daily purposes like bathing. Waiting for a longer time to make sure water reaches the required temperature is a really time taking process for the people who have to boil water frequently as it takes a lot of time. Seeing this is a major concern nowadays, we thought of solving this problem by finding an efficient way to boil water. Now, the point is, why is it important to look at this problem? After doing some research on the internet, we found out that many sites tell us that it takes 6 to 8 minutes to boil 1 liter of water on a gas stove and more time on an electric stove and even more time in a glass jar as compared to a ceramic or iron cutter. And we know that in this fast moving world, every person wants to get their work done at the least possible time. And solving this can even save energy a longer time, which is really important and a good thing for a developing country like India. One way to solve this is to modify the design of utensils that could transfer more heat to the fluid and thereby decrease the time it takes to boil. By just thinking and looking at similar kinds of problems, we found out that the possible solution is to modify the design of the utensil. Like idea one, we can modify the bottom of the utensil to capture more heat, which will lead to less wastage of heat outside and speeding up the volume. Idea two, by looking at the motherboard fins to dissipate more energy to the surrounding and CPU, we got the idea of using the fins inside the vessel, which will increase the amount of heat to boil water, thereby decreasing the time to boil. For now, we have chosen idea two. That is, we are going to add fins inside the cell, which will lead to increasing heat transfer, taking less time and thereby saving fuel. Looking at the bigger picture, the problem is located in the domain of time-based analysis of heat transfer. In zoomed out view, there is a room in which a utensil is placed on a gas stove on which boiling of water takes place. And simply looking at this picture, we can say that there is radiation between the walls of room and utensil surface, convection between surface of utensil and outside air, and conduction within the metal. Talking about the zoomed in system, that is this diagram, it shows us the part we are going to use for the heat transfer analysis. Here, our system is a square shaped bottom vessel with some amount of water in it. That is, what we are going to boil, this utensil is kept on gas stove to heat up in an ambient temperature around it. Now, talking about how system interacts with, it, with its environment, from this picture we can see that there is radiation exchange between the environment and the hot vessel used for boiling. Convection on the outer surface of the vessel due to the air present outside, and in case of fins, there is convection due to water. From these interactions of the system with surrounding, we can see that convection with surrounding air, radiation, and conduction with the possible heat transfer processes. Now, the point is to choose a control volume. The control volume we have chosen contains only the bottom part of the utensil and fins. That is, we are neglecting the side walls of the utensils as there is negligible amount of heat being transferred through them. Heat fluxes as seen from the diagram are there is heat flux due to radiation from the bottom surface and both the side parts of the bottom surface. There is convection on the outer surface of the vessel due to the air present outside and also there is convection between fins and the fluid that is convection due to water. Here are some temperatures and materials that we have used. Some of the known quantities are T infinity, temperature of air or uh, the surrounding temperature that is equal to 27 degrees centigrade. T naught, temperature of the outer surface of water plate that is 127 degrees centigrade. B that is the thickness of the water plate of utensil that is 5 mm. A1, area of water plate of utensil that is 100 centimeter square. Q that is heat coming from the heat source that is 14 kilowatt. Area of fin is equal to 0 0.01 meter square. LF, less length of fin is equal to 0 0.1 meter. Also, here we have taken aluminium as a material of the utensils and fins are assumed to be of pivotal shape. Using the assumptions and given terminologies, we get this problem state. In this, we have to basically find out the temperature of the upper surface of the utensil by using the given dimensions and material property of utensils and fins. Yeah. So now we are going to analyze the energy balances. So firstly, we have to estimate the heat transfer modes. The heat transfer modes are convection between the bottom and the side walls and the air. The convection between the water and the upper surface of the bottom. Conduction within the metal and the radiation from the metal to the surrounding. Now we have assumed two control volumes. For this control volume, as shown in this diagram, we have taken the energy balance as this. And after neglecting the kinetic and the potential energy, we get these equations. And as there is no work done, no energy is stored, so these terms drop down to zero. And neglecting kinetic and potential energy, we get this equation. Um, and for the second control volume, as seen from this diagram, we get after energy balance, we get this equation. And 
on a steady state as dt by dt term goes to zero we get the simplified equation and on e equating the qw term from both the equations we get the simplified equation and after neglecting as assumed we neglect the convection and the radiation due to the side walls of the bottom surface as of now and so by applying the formula for the bottom surface of the utensil for conduction convection and the radiation formula and using the nusselt correlation and relay number and characteristic length formula um and get putting the desired values at the film temperature we get the values of q air and q radiation that is the convection flux and the radiation flux uh, and which and after analyzing we know we see that uh, these values are much less as compared to the q uh, supply that is 14 kilowatt therefore neglecting them to get the equations um, of uh, t1 and after putting the values of t0 q d and a1 we get the values of t1 as a uh, it goes into steady state very in very less time so for further calculation we have assumed t1 to be constant as 97.71 degree celsius and using this t1 we calculated the average temperature and the film temperature at this t1 value and to evaluate and validate our assumption of neglecting the convection and the radiation through side walls we use the appropriate nusselt number correlation as shown here uh, and relay number using the characteristic length equal to d we get the value of qr and qn which is the radiation and convection term uh, as these terms are too low so our assumption is valid now uh, the technical problem um, as uh, stated like the book problem uh, we ha we have given required values and geometric parameters of utensils and films like in the problem shown here that is input heat and temperatures are given so we have to discuss and analyze two conditions of utensils while boiling water with pins and without pins now we are going to compare these two conditions on the basis of heat supplied to the fluid and the time taken by the fluid to boil up also we are going to estimate values at different surface area of the bottom and increasing number of pins for the simpler case we have taken uh, shape of pins as cuboidal and the material of pin and utensil is a aluminium that is the constant and the dimension of the utensils are given here as stated in this problem also now looking at the temperature profile that is 1d temperature profile uh, here as shown in this diagram for both utensil with pins and utensil without pins now in both the cases bottom surface air is assumed hot therefore due to natural convection between air and the hot air uh, there will be results as shown here uh, in the below part that is t air to t node after that it is assumed in both the cases the temperature of the air will be equal to the outer surface given a perpendicular line as shown same will be the case for the profile inside the slab as only conduction is occurring inside the slab that is within the metal so there will be straight line with temperature gradient difference comes in case when we look at the temperature profile inside water uh, in absence of fins uh, water is considered cold fluid due to which we have a convective temperature profile as in the first case, shown in the first case in the fin case due to fin more heat is dissipated from the surface results in steeper slope in comparison to previous cases which leads to more enhanced heat transfer um, now firstly we are going to look at some of the simplified assumptions we have taken we assume our system to be in steady state the fins to be identical and cuboidal the side walls and the bottom surface to be uniform the air surrounding the system to be ideal several other properties of the system to be constant throughout the system water at uniform temperature uh, and side walls of the utensil to be made up insulated expelling them from the heat transfer calculation also we have assumed the air just below the lower bottom surface is at constant temperature of 127 degrees celsius now uh, then we will go and move on to the calculation part uh, the calculation for the heat transfer rate in this case that doesn't involve pins can be done simply with the formula of heat transfer uh, as shown here in the slide or after neglecting the convection in the convection between the air and the water now mm, for the case with pins an additional term needs to be added to the expression of h before calculating the expression let's find out the coefficient of convection heat transfer or h we first calculate the equivalent uh, length after calculating the temperature difference we have all the values that we need to put in the formula for relay number 
Now we will use the Rayleigh number to calculate the Nusselt number shown here in this slide. And after choosing an appropriate correlation between the two, then we will calculate the co convection coefficient from the relation of H with the Nusselt number equivalent length and the conduction coefficient. If you observe the slides carefully, you will see that we have done these two calculations parallelly for the two cases. Um, using the results from these two cases, we have to fit the data and set a correlation for H in terms of T1 minus Tw and C. C is here constant. Now, we substitute this formula of H in the energy balance equation um, and then integrate it for the case of with, without fins. For the case of without fins, we have obtained the formula for T as this uh, shown in slide. Now, for the case with fins, energy balance on integrating the T, on integrating the H term, we get this as the energy balance. And after integrating, we get the formula for time as shown here. Now, looking at the results, as of now, that we have derived expressions for the time taken by water in both the cases with fins and without fins. So we can compare data for different values of water and temperature. So on the next slide, we have formed a table uh, to compare these data. As in this slide, shown here a table. Um, on this table, we have taken different values such as time taken with fins, time taken without fins, biot number, Q fin, etc. Obtained when the initial temperature of water at each case is different while keeping the number of fins as constant. Also, we have plotted uh, here the graph between the temperature of the water and the time taken in both the cases with fins and without fins. We can easily see that the time taken with fins is less than the time taken without fins. Now, we have plotted the graph between the number of the fins and the time taken, that is the effect of changing the number of fins on the time taken to the boil the fluid. As we increase the number of fins, the time taken decreases. This graph shows the effect of changing the bottom surface area on time. As seen from the graph, as we increase the surface area of bottom, uh, time taken to boil the water decreases. Now, coming to the conclusions part, as of now, we come to the conclusion that adding the fins on the surface area uh, increases the rate of heat transfer to water, hence decreasing the time taken to reach a certain temperature. And when we increase the number of fins on the surface, then it increases the heat transfer rate as heat transfer due to fins is directly related to the number of fins. So the overall rate increases, hence the time taken decreases. Also increasing the surface area of the bottom of an utensil also increases the heat transfer rate by providing much less temperature gradient across the bottom plate, thereby decreasing the time taken to boil up the fluid. Mm. Now, after doing the whole thing, we look, we now looking at the assumptions, again we found out that the side walls of the utensils cannot be neglected as they do add some significant amount of heat to the fluid. But while we are comparing the lead, as in both the cases, they add the same value. So they didn't make any difference in our results. Also, we have temperature of water uniform, but the temperature of the water is not uniform as it varies in bi direction with time. But as steady state reaches early uh, in less time, so we take uniform temperature for boiling uh, at the steady state or around steady state. Mm. Now, looking at the major goals accomplished, uh, we can say that we have accomplished two major goals. That is, it saved the time of the user since time consumed is reduced, so it also reduces the amount of energy used, that is, uses uh, energy more efficiently. Now, looking at our solution, we, we analyze the scope of improvement. We analyze that one need to find an optimum number of fins, which can be used as when we, we are increasing the number of fins, there's loss of amount of water equal to the volume of fins. Either we need to such a design of fins so that it increases area, but also takes less space and cost efficient. For example, we can use parabolic fins. Also, uh, in future, we can, we can do some things like we know that using fins increases the heat transfer and time taken is less. Therefore, in future, we can look at this kinds of design as this decreases time by a factor of half, which is very good in the fast moving world. So we can take this design to more big levels like large boilers, chemical plants, or in some power plants to speed up in the boiling process or some of the big restaurants or cafe where water is boiled in bulk. Uh, thank you. Hope you like it.